Okay, I'm just going to talk you through a few principles of page layouts using a smaller size example. So I'm just going to I'm just going to create a new document in Photoshop, and I'm going to make it 300 by 450 pixels so that it fits on the screen. Okay. So some important things about layout. Generally. All my web pages have a white content area, so I will very often have a specific layer for the main panel or content area. I'm just going to use a selection tool and create this area and to fill it in with the background color, do control delete, deselect. I'm going to change my background to, yeah. if I change that to black, let's see what happens. Now we have used white content area with very dark backgrounds before and let me just put in a fake logo up here go into the T tool make it left aligned move it to here and then make it smaller I can actually use the free transform there control T I'm going to change the colour of the logo as well Okay, so this can on occasion work, and we've used that metoosolo.com is, is one example. But if you look at this image, what you'll notice is that there's a, a strong contrast boundary between the white foreground and the dark background. And what that does is it draws your eye, then it tends to draw your eye away from the content. So I'm just going to put some, some text in here. Behind my content layer, so let's put it here, change it to Vedana and 25 point. Okay, that's more than that. Now, what's happening is this area where the white meets the dark, that boundary tends to draw your attention away from other stuff. And if I show you, if I change the opacity of the background, control U for hue saturation and lightness. If I make that now uh, grey, can you see how the words here is come page content? <laughs> Should we hear is some page content? See the words have become seem like they're coming forwards. The logo almost disappears at that point because the tone is the same, there's no contrast. Here is some page content. It's now very much more the focus of the page there than it is here. So what we quite often do is go for a very pale background. And the reason we do that is to minimize the change in tonal contrast between the foreground and background. However, you still want there to be some differentiation because you need to know where the content stops or doesn't. I mean, it's not it's not critical. You can have a pure white background and just use white space to distinguish your, your elements. Something you'll quite often have, I can short click on there, duplicate the layer, call it header. I'm going to hold shift and slide it up. And then I'm going to Shift control and square bracket. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to copy this color. And I'm going to paste it into there. I'm going to make my logo now white. What I've done here is I've created a header for the page. And the header's good in this instance because it lets you know where the top of the page is. If you have a, a page and the white content area goes all the way to the top, I find it slightly disconcerting because it's like you feel like you ought to be able to scroll up a little bit. And there's nothing like having a, a strong colored header at the top of the page as well to, to let you know exactly where the top of the page is. And you can do that without having to look very closely at all. By the same token, 
you should always have some space at the bottom of your page to um, to distinguish the end of the content from the end of the, the actual page itself. I've just done that. If I desaturate it, and darken it quite often, then you know you've got no doubts there. Even though this is a very very small graphic, you've got no doubts what's the top of the page, what's the bottom of the page, and where the content is meant to be. You can put your content on a dark background. If I hit Control I to invert. Do image mode. I don't even know how you do that. Control I anyway. Um, and make the this text white on the black background. That's still high contrast text. But I think you'll find that it's duplicated the layer there. I'm going to reinvert that and I'm going to change this text back into black. They're both quite readable in terms of they're clear. However, light text on a dark background tends to be more tiring to read than dark text on a light background, which is why in pretty much all of the designs that we do, all of our text is on a light colored background. So there's just a few principles of layout for your web pages that it'd be good to take on board. Mm -hmm.